Well, it has now been a year since NATO and its allies began their final withdrawal from Afghanistan after a conflict lasting nearly 20 years. The scenes of people scrambling onto planes will remain an image of history, just as the last helicopter fleeing the US embassy in Saigon has become the lasting image of the Vietnam War. Well, joining me now to discuss his experience advising US Central Command is Major General Chip Chapman. Chip, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I did want to talk about uh, Afghanistan today to mark that one year anniversary um, and those scenes of people trying to get out of Afghanistan. But of course, if we look at what's happening just this week, we've seen violence still happening in Kabul. Well, that's right. And you would, I think. I think, firstly, we've got to remember that the strategic objective of withdrawing the NATO forces from Afghanistan has been shown to be correct in the last year. That is, the U.S. strategic objective was always to prevent catastrophic attack on the mainland of the U.S. And certainly from July 21, both the head of the CIA, Director Burns, and the head of the uh, Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines, said al-Qaeda and IS no longer have the capability to threaten the homeland. And I think we've also seen that in the U.K. with only one, uh, one attack of David Amos last year, and that was an inspired attack not a centralised attack from al-Qaeda or, uh, or IS. So from a strategic security perspective, the decision to withdraw was correct. That is different than saying the human security aspects yeah. look terrible. And that is all those things to do with access to education, women's rights and various freedoms, which are still in turmoil in Afghanistan and will be for some time, because one of the things we're seeing at the moment is the growing influence in the power structures of those who are very, very hard line is Akinzadi, the leader of the Taliban and the Haqqani uh, interior minister. And so you might well see things getting worse in Afghanistan in terms of an impending split between, in, between and within the Taliban, because they were never really a centralized organization in how they fought the war. Some were uh, given orders by the Quetta Shura, others by the Peshawar Shura, and now trying to centralize the state that in, in itself creates frictions in the, in the Pashtun honor code. So a, a very mixed picture from the security perspective. If you're in the West, it's great. If you're someone who's living in Afghanistan, it's terrible. Yeah, and, and surely we, we should be concerned, given that we were there for 20 years, we should be concerned about what is actually happening uh, in, in the country uh, today. And perhaps if you can um, explain to our viewers and listeners the background to the sort of attacks that we've seen on Wednesday at a, at a mosque in Kabul, why is that continuing to happen? Well, you've still got a, a large number of groups in Afghanistan, uh, particularly ISK, that's the Islamic State Khorasan, uh, the, the people who, who seek to do attacks through the Central, uh, Central Asia and, uh, and Southern, uh, Southern Asia. Uh, and that is really because of a major doctrinal uh, difference between the Pashtun, uh, the Taliban, who are Diobandi Hanafi uh, strain of Islam, and the ISK, who really are sort of Salafist Wahhabis from the sort of Middle Eastern school. So one sees the other, the IS sees the Taliban as apostates, they're not true Muslims, and therefore they're marked out for attack. And this is why we always got the Taliban wrong in terms of the Taliban were really Pashtun nationalists. They weren't global jihadists in the way that IS and Al-Qaeda are and were and are. And I, I think that's fascinating because when we're looking in from the UK into what's happening, we see them all uh, as, you know, the same, if I can put it like that, you know, and it strikes me coming from Northern Ireland that that often happens to us as well. And you served in Northern Ireland and you know what that is like. Um, and uh, it, it is a case of us trying to explain to our listeners and viewers what the differences are. Isn't that right? Yeah, it is. And of course, it's a lot wider than that. So it is the countries which surround uh, Afghanistan, which are even uh, terrified of what the spillover might be from those groups that are there. So, for example, if you're China, you're worried about a group called the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, ETIM, and there was an attack in Kunduz in October from a, a guy who had the handle of a Uyghur, which terrified the, uh, terrified the Chinese. The Pakistanis have had a, um, a group called the TTP, Tariqi Taliban Pakistan, which have been attacking into Pakistan from Afghan territory. And one of the big splits in the last year has been really between the Taliban and Pakistan, who have had a number of airstrikes into, um, 
into Afghanistan. And partly that's to do with this fact that there is this increasing Taliban uh, nationalism 